All right. Are, are we done with our MA sidebar? Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you have uh, Oh, by the way, over... Monty, I have a very quick, very quick sidebar off that, though. Here is okay. the sidebar. You know what's <laughs> weird? You're all going to think, come on, this is the easiest setup of all time, right? Thor and the Monkey are going to absolutely donk on Latigris, right, for that weird commentary where she thought the dragon went down, but it hadn't gone down. She kept commenting, and then she sort of didn't acknowledge she was wrong until they sort of told her. Here's why we're not going to do that, because Monty actually did that himself. It just can happen in a cast. Monty famously yeah. had one where he thought because a baron went down that actually shy with like a sunfire kit, but actually hit it with the last <laughs> tick. It was just a famous one where he had a brain fart. And it and the problem with that, Monty, I actually thought for real, like, I, obviously, look, it really did sound like a bad moment on the street when she did this. And look, it, uh, yes, in the modern day, people already have got all the fucking scrutiny in the magnifying glass to criticize them. But I just wanted to actually ask you that, Monty. If you're in the middle of a cast like that, and remember, in League of Legends, there's a million things you can talk about in a Baron fight, in an objective fight, like people flanking, what's the gold, what does, what's the significance of the drag? It's easy to get lost. And the thing I think people don't understand is this, Monty. You can't just go, oh, pause, rewind. Uh, I didn't make, you have to sort of like, in a way, and try and keep going. And almost, yes, and the thing you said, wrong and, and turn the ship and start to realize if you're i just thought i wanted to ask you about that because i think it's not it's a lot there's more nuance to that than people realize it's not as simply she's an idiot like i think she so, just got lost in something and then kept following her own narrative if you know what i mean it, you can't know too if there's like some weird thing distracting you like there but could always say be something you're or something, yeah the producer talking to you you don't yep. fucking know um i will say that obviously and and ox can talk to this as well live commentary you will inevitably be wrong that's just how it rolls. Like you're going to fuck up because you are basically taking here. Here's the analogy. You are taking an oral exam as a caster on an extremely strategically complex game in front of a hundred thousand, a million people who are all capable. You know, one of them will probably, there are going to be so many people who are watching this game that know better than you about Every single aspect of the game, because somebody's going to be that fucking Cled one trick that knows more about Cled mechanics, yes. right? And some, so like you are going to fuck up uh, inevitably, right? It is just such a super complex game. I mean, the pro players are the same way; they fuck up all the time, right? They're even the pro players. Are, if they, if you're not a Cled one trick, you're not going to know as much as a Cled one trick. That's why pro players go when they want to learn to do champion. They go to even talk to those one tricks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they all do yeah. it. <laughs> they all do it. Um, and so it's really, really difficult because not one human being is going to know anywhere close to the total amount of information at this game. So you have to kind of play to your strengths, right? And it is just inevitable. Now, here's what I will say about Latigris is this. As a play-by-play -play caster, one of the theories of play-by-play -play is that in traditional sports, there is a ball or there is a center point of action that is self-explanatory and is easy for the audience to follow. In most esports, uh, I would say Counter-Strike is a little bit different because there's a bomb, and so you kind of know where the bomb is at any point in time. So that is the... It, and you have a radar another, so you can see where they're going to fight yeah, or whatever. Yeah, th th it's also like another reason why Counter-Strike is the best esport because it yeah. actually does a lot of the, the work for you. Like what Counter-Strike does is everybody knows what it what's going on because it's all real world weapons and that everybody knows, right? You don't have to be a video game fan to understand. It's easy to explain. The the cadence of the game is in rounds. So there's time to like break it down and do replays and try to like properly narrate the action. The the act the the focal point of the action naturally winnows down over the rounds. So you always get the exciting moment at the end of the round where it's very clear where the camera should be for the most part. Obviously like mistakes are made, but um League of Legends doesn't have that. You know, MOBAs don't have that. RTS doesn't have that. Battle Royale certainly doesn't have that. Um, and so back to the ball analogy, the purpose of a play-by-play -play caster is to provide the ball. And that is a very fucking hard thing to do. Um, I've done play-by-play -play casting in League of Legends. I would consider myself passable, but You're by no good. means good. <laughs> well, thank you. I would say by no means good. Um, especially compared to the the wonderful play-by-play -play casters that we have. But I think one of the issues with Latigris is that she doesn't know what where the ball is, uh, metaphorically. And so it becomes very difficult to parse what is going on in team fights. And I think that is the true fundamental skill of MOBA of MOBA play-by-play -play casters. And to, you know, when we're talking about Latigris, 
I think it's just deeply unfair that the broadcast has had her basically do every fucking role on the yeah. show so she can never actually get comfortable or good or develop synergy in any one of these things. Now, my personal opinion is, is that she is probably weakest at casting. And like, I'm not super excited to see her cast, especially when we have people like Captain Flowers. Like, I mean, that's that's a hard comparison, right? Sure. But it just, you know, when we're talking about these playoff matches, you know, if it's if it's a random regular season match, then fine. Like maybe give her some reps like it's not too bad. But like playoff matches, like maybe let's not do that. Um, I mean, you know it's what I'm saying, Ox, is while you're out there, you think you're just going to cast like great Korean players. By the time you finish, I want to be able to put a coin in, press F12 like I just did with Monty. And then I want a whole five minute breakdown of like a concept abstractly in esports <laughs> with no like ums, ahs, like you're going to perfect diction. You just go <laughs> along. It's almost like a fucking karaoke. You're just following the w words with the bounce of body. This is fucking <laughs> insane. And at the end, you just cap it. And then you uh, uh, do you have any thoughts, sir, Ox? Did, uh, do, you, do you want to jump in with anything? Yeah, I mean, I just want to say that I agree. <laughs> um, there you go. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I I feel like that's something when I was earlier on in casting, I always had an issue with. It's not you like must have had safe. some LPL games where there was some crazy fight where you can't possibly see what's going on and you don't know who smited it. And, you know, there's, there's, there must be some crazy scenarios that happened to you before. There's, I honestly, like, I'd say something I think one of my strongest points as a caster is I'm pretty good at tracking what happens in team fights. All right. Um, what, what would you say the secret to it is then? I'm watching a lot of team fights. Uh, I used to when, when right I, then, right. I get it's from that school, guys. Okay, yeah, five, five, you can't five, five, one off. You know what? I set myself up for that one. Fuck my like, God! Then. You know, I, I used to I used to compete as a player, which helped. But also, like back yeah. back in like 2016, 2017, when I was when I was not even competing as a player, but whenever I woke up in the morning, I just used to watch, like, you know those highlight channels of, like, LC LCK and LPL? Yeah, and yeah. I just watched, like, every game. And it was just, it's just, like, the highlights, so it's, like, the fight. So I just watched yeah. team fight after team fight after team fight after team fight. And, like, it helps you sort of pick out I mean, that wasn't like I wasn't doing this because I wanted to cast because at that time, because I had no idea I ended up being, being a caster. I just did it because I found it interesting. And then I think it's, like, as well, like it's a game knowledge thing, like understanding like what's the pivotal pieces. I think something that like can really help as a color caster to help out your play by play is like you can say, you can like highlight something like go to the fight. You say like, okay, this is the thing you need to watch. Or like watch for this based on the flank. Or like this is the target they need to take down, and that can yes. like help set them up if the if they are someone who's struggling a bit on like uh, focusing on the key moments. Someone who I think is like really good at that is like medic. I think who is okay. a, a play by play who has a lot of game knowledge as well. But also like when I. When I watch team fights, obviously I'm sitting like at home watching like the LEC. He will catch things that I feel like often go unnoticed in his okay. first watch through. Because I think what normally happens is like a play by play will highlight the the main story of the fight, and then like colors will be able to pick out like maybe key moments. Or sometimes if they don't catch it, they'll like notice in the replay. But medic does a really good job of like picking out like. Oh, there was like this small interaction. Like they interrupted a dash with this ability, and he'll like yeah. he'll like call it live, which is like really cool to see because it it is it's a super hard skill, and I I feel like it's one of these things that just come with ridiculous amounts of practice. You know what, Monty? Maybe he has already got the Korean vibe because he did just give like faker esque advice there as to how you yes. improve. He was just like um, practice <laughs> with diligence and advice. make consistent gradual improvements. Like thanks, faker. <laughs> <laughs> but I actually do game. get what he means there. Like, here's because yeah. here's the thing when he says that he actually didn't mean that as like frivolous advice. When he said, think about it, he did just give you literally the secret, by the way, after the joke, which was he essentially just pounded his brain with a like, constant stimuli of team fights. So that what happened is even his unconscious just picks out like the patterns and sort of gets a sense of where they are. It's why, by the way, I've always thought the number one mistake they make in League of Legends highlights films to this day is they don't do what someone once did. Like, I'm no joke back in 2014. If you make a highlight clip, You've got to do that thing where each new clip, you pause the frame a second, quickly put like a circle or a square over the person who does all the kills, and then you play the clip. Because the joke is like, that's why also these scenarios are all ha so hard to do. Even when you know what happens, it's confusing all the stuff that goes on. I've always thought League of Legends has a big problem with visual noise anyway, you know, so I don't play it. By the way, that's aside from whether you're a good caster. I've just wanted to bring this topic up because I just thought people don't realize how hard it is to be a caster. Yeah. They all think I they just go on and just say what's happening. It's like, it isn't that easy, guys. Yeah, and also, I mean, it's it's also just things that you can and can't do when you're casting, even as a color caster. So for an, for as an example, I haven't been doing my bangers only for the last couple of weeks because I've been working a, on a lot of stuff with LFN on the business side. And, you know, it's very hard for me to put out my streams for those of you guys who have been enjoying it when I have like, 
you know, I'll have like an hour and then like a call scheduled and then like an hour and then another call scheduled. So like I can't stream even though because my day is just so like fragmented at this point in time. I am hoping that we will be, you know, in a better place soon to do that because I would rather be doing that, frankly. <laughs> um, it would be a lot less less stressful. But uh, the point is, is that when I do bangers only, I say, here's what, you know, especially when we watch Gen G games, I say, here's why you guys have bought, you don't understand why Gen G is good. And part of the, the most reason- most Monty-esque is- beginning to any segment, by the way. <laughs> Everyone, my audience, here's why you condescendingly just don't understand what I understand. But, but luckily, course. though, I will, like a, uh, you know, like a kind page, I will allow you to-, to Yes, you, you may plans. sit at my feet and I will explain to you what you just do not know. And maybe, exactly. maybe you never can know, but we will at least attempt a semblance of knowing. Exactly. You you will, you will get a, a glimpse into a single facet exactly. yes. of my knowledge. Um so, but then, but, but then, avert your eyes. Don't attempt to take any more in, or yeah, it could exactly. overwhelm your your p- puny brain. <laughs> you, yeah, exactly. You can't be if you tried to if you tried to turn your mind to the full brilliance of Peanut and Chovy and the Godhead. Yes, exactly. You would actually it would be like a a Lovecraftian horror where the it, it would be far too make vast go for the human mind <laughs> okay. uh, to comprehend. You would go insane. You need to have uh, like fucking what is it like Perseus where you have the shield to look and reflect. <laughs> Only look in the reflection though. If you look directly at you say it'll you'll just go mad from not understanding the learning genius and the ability to use Poppy in a macro sense. You think Poppy's just a jungler. No, no, Poppy is the jungle. You know, Poppy's you know coming out I mean? these playoffs, by the way. I'm very confident. Definitely. That That's gonna be the comfort her. pick. That's the comfort <laughs> pick game five, mate. I'm telling you right now. The poppy's coming back. Uh, it came back in the last T1 versus Gen G series. I love the poppy. Anyway. By the way, as an aside, one thing I did want to ask again about LCK. I had one question. No, 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 no. There's a point. Oh, to my, hold on. There's a point. Oh, go on. Yeah, go so on. So when I talk about Gen G and just to, to wrap up the point about casting is that people on my stream have asked, like, why don't the casters talk about some of Gen G's objective setups? And I'm like, okay. well, they happened like two minutes ago. So I, I was like, I have the luxury of watching what happens at an objective and then going back in time and two minutes earlier, watching the teleports come in, watching the wave manipulations and the warding patterns that go in. But as a color caster, if you comment on those things at the time, they may not seem important and they may not, in fact, be important in the long run because you don't know what the effect of those things are going to be. So by the time Genji takes an uncontested Drake because of what they did earlier, it's very hard to talk about that as a caster, even if you know what happened, because you have to cite a bunch of things that people can no longer see. And so you're basically right. just explaining some like weird teleports to minion waves or like, guys, remember two and a half minutes ago when like they pruned the caster minions off this wave and then it started slow push. And it's like, it's honestly fucking boring to most people. Um, and you're like, and that's why they got an uncontested Drake. So I'm like, honestly, like, I don't know if I would be talking about this shit in the context Girl. of the game as it's going on. It's too nerdy. It's only shit that you can talk about yes. now. And like, yes. maybe the casters didn't even notice these things because there's not, there's the, your focus is elsewhere, right? And we are yes. very specifically, we are going back and watching it multiple times and looking for these things. Um, yes. So even as a color caster, the point is it can be very difficult to, to tell the actual story of a game. And I'll just throw this in there as well. In line with what Monty just said as well. We're also replaying a clip over and over and over and over and then and watching everything they did. She's watched it live. They didn't have a chance to like do any of this stuff. We can't do some Doctor Strange level shit like, oh, you know, after the millionth view, she's really fucking bad at casting. Like, see more cool, funny, interesting clips based on topics from my content. Well, subscribe to this channel then or, you know, be a pleb and don't.